Hey gang, so recording somewhere different because I'm just in a mood and I don't feel like sitting in my office. So, Kick has now acquired, well, non-exclusively, XQC and Amaranth. I, I, I mean, obviously they have the money to throw it at, at streamers of this caliber. And the estimated 100 million for XQC and however much they're giving Amaranth, it's a big deal. And I question if it's going to actually turn into, if it's going to have the impact that they're hoping. Because obviously they're trying to grab these huge streamers to, don't mind the cat, to pull their audiences over to kick and initially, at least with the first cup, first stream or two, then yeah, they're probably going to have people come over from Twitch or wherever to see what it's all about, see how Kick goes. Does that mean it's going to increase Kick's market share? I don't know. I, I don't know because fundamentally, Kick and Twitch are similar. I mean, it's basically Kick is just. The, the Twitch UI with some minor changes and Kick is going to have all the same problems Twitch has in terms of discoverability and eventually with the, the scrutiny that's going to be coming with these big deals, the DMCA and all the copyright stuff and all the moderation, you know, uh, advertisers are going to be taking a long, hard look at Kick and how they deal with policing the platform and the kinds of content and communities that are thriving there and right now Twitch has the biggest market share for streaming that that's just you know undeniably true Kick is trying to muscle into that Trovo has a tiny percentage YouTube is YouTube is being YouTube I mean they're not really investing in live streaming, but a lot of streamers, myself included, are probably pivoting to YouTube at this point because, well, Twitch is a dumpster fire. So, Kick is making big moves to try to secure Twitch's audience and bring them to the platform. I, I don't know that it, that acquisitions like this are going to have that much impact. Sure, the diehard XQC and Amaranth fans are going to go to, to follow them on the kick, and maybe they'll stick around. More and more streamers, big, small, medium, are going to kick because they want that sub-split. <sighs> Will this have long-term play? I don't know. I, I can foresee an occasion where especially mid and small streamers will try kick and think it's great. And yeah, they'll get the 95% for the subs they get from the tiny followings that they brought with them. And maybe some new people where the platform is still small in terms of market share, they have an opportunity to capture some new eyes. If say kick got 40% of the overall market share of live streaming in a couple of years time, then I think aside from the sub split, streamers are going to be disappointed when they discover that there's not really that much difference otherwise, because unless kick has plans to implement some kind of crazy discovery system that Twitch never thought of, it's just going to be Twitch 2.0 just with gambling money behind it. So, even if you make the transition and start streaming on Kick, sure, you might have the benefit of a subscription, but you're still not going to have any discovery. You're still going to have to do all the same things that Twitch streamers do right now. So, in the long run, what's the benefit? I don't know. Other than, of course, Twitch continues to make mistakes. So, uh, anywhere might be more attractive than Twitch right now, which I understand since I'm obviously pivoting more to YouTube but on the whole there's three ways this could break down kick could gobble up the market share potentially and become a real rival for twitch or Twi twitch could get shut down because it just bleeds talent and is bleeding viewers and eventually just 
reaches a point where Amazon's like, yeah, we're good. And they'll make more money selling the AWS service to companies like Kick, who's paying Amazon for the, to host their servers. Or the third option, in a year or two, Kick shuts down because Stake has already captured enough money from converting viewers of Kick into gamblers on Stake that the experiment was successful. You know, the two-year contracts for the streamers they hired are up. They can shut down the service. They've made enough money. It was a great marketing experiment, and it dies there, leaving all those streamers who left Twitch or other places for Kick going back to Twitch or somewhere else or not streaming anymore. Who knows? Two years, a lot can happen. Uh, I question if Kick is going to be a lasting thing. We've seen lots of other streaming services pop up and close down. I mean, Mixer, and there are some other ones whose names I can't remember, and then whatever's going on with Rumble and Trovo. I'm, I'm surprised Trovo is still around. I mean, yes, it's funded by Tencent, and that's all the money in the world, but it's still there, which surprises me. So... I mean, Kick could hang on for a couple of years, maybe, if they really want to make that investment. Or it was a great experiment. It was an interesting marketing thing for Steak. And they're just like, all right, we've made enough money. We've converted lots. Getting kind of bored of this. The contracts are coming up. Let's just shut Kick down. And Kick goes away. <sighs> Ultimately... As creators, you have to decide where the best place for your content is. And if it's Kick, well, good luck to you. If it's Twitch, uh, good luck to you. <laughs> if it's YouTube, Trobo, Rumble, or insert place here. I mean, hey, Ellie Muskie is thinking about having a gaming streaming kind of subdivision of Twitter. I I'd give that a go. My, my largest social media following is on Twitter, so who knows? <laughs> but then again, knowing Elon Musk, we probably have to pay him in order to stream on Twitter. So, But, you know, I, there's interesting times ahead, and Kick might be making some more big acquisitions. Who knows? Maybe YouTube is going to start really taking an eyeball and go, huh, if this site is willing to pay $100 million dollars or some kind of quote near that for one guy, maybe we really need to think about boosting our live streaming service aspect and go after some talent again and actually pour development into it. Maybe this will light a fire under YouTube to really enter the streaming market more wholeheartedly. Or maybe YouTube's like, no, we're good. We, we've got enough things in place. We don't need to worry about it anymore. We've got the market share on videos anyway, so do we really need to do that much work? I don't know. All I know is non-exclusive deals, big streamers on kick, more and more people leaving Twitch to go somewhere. Not necessarily viewers, but streamers are leaving. <clears throat> I think the next year is going to be very interesting for the space. And I already know my own plans. So what are your thoughts? Let me know. Put them in the comments. You can find all my profiles in the description. I hope you found this interesting. Maybe we can start a conversation. Either way, things are looking grim for Twitch. So is this the rise of kick? Or is Kick a flash in the pan and YouTube will ultimately be the winner? Only time of the great pumpkin can tell us that. Anyway, that's it. All right. Bye.